Hi, welcome back. Chapter 12, Family Matters. The next morning, my classmates ran over to our table to check on the tadpoles, and they didn't even say good morning to me. To squeak the truth, I was trying not to look at the tadpoles. Look, Simon shouted as he raced to our table. Wow, I couldn't help it. I hurried to the side of my cage to look at my neighbors. There they were, swimming around their aquarium. Their heads and legs had changed overnight. They didn't exactly look like frogs, but they were definitely not specks anymore. My friends all crowded around the aquarium. Joey opened his notebook and began to sketch. When Cassie arrived, her cheeks were pink and her eyes sparkled. I can't believe it. I found another nest in the front yard and it has four eggs in it. Everyone gathered around her to see a photo she'd taken. Ah, oh, they said, and they're so cute. I'm calling the first eggs Eeny, Meeny, and Mo. Cassie said, now I have to think of four more names. We still need to give the tadpoles names, helpful Holly said. How about Nog and um, Yog after their uncle Og, Daniel suggested. Og leaped up and twang. Yeah, boing, boing. My friends giggled, but I didn't see what was so funny. How about Dippy, Kelsey said. Dippy and Lippy, Dippy and Hippy, Thomas shook his head. Those aren't good names. I still think they should be Tad and Paul. No one else liked that idea. Max, Simon said. Max and, um, Mickey, Tall Paul said. Max and Mickey, Rosie frowned. What makes you think they're boys? One of them might be a girl. Both of them might be girls, Nicole said. They argued in a friendly way, and finally Rosie said, flip and flap. That doesn't sound like boys or girls. I like those names. And so did my friends. Welcome to room 26, Flip and Flap, Mrs. Brisbane said. Now, students, please take your seats. We started the day by reviewing my classmates' family trees. It was fascinating to hear the names of my friend's parents. Next, Mrs. Brisbane showed them where to add their grandparents' names. Grandma and Grandpa, Harry said. Simon grinned. Bubby and Zadie, Abuela and Abuelo, Felipe said. Rose, Rolling Rosie gave them a thumbs up. Mine too. Goodness, there were so many names for grandmother and grandfather. Poppy and Gma, Granny and Gramps, Papa and Maymay. One thing's for sure, Mrs. Brisbane said, no matter what you call them, you all love your grandparents. Tonight, please add their real names, first and last. Then we'll add your aunts, uncles, and cousins. I'll hand out an example that shows you where to put them. I have a lot of cousins. Stop talking, Sophie said. Mrs. Brisbane nodded. Then you'll have a lot of apples on your trees. Mrs. Uh, Felipe said, let's make Humphrey's family tree. The whole class thought that was a good idea, but I wasn't sure I had a family tree or even a family. Who were Humphrey's mom and dad? Sophie asked. Where did he come from? Mrs. Brisbane thought for a moment. Ms. Mack got him from Petorama. I didn't remember my family, but I did remember Petorama. And the wonderful day Mrs. Mack chose me for the classroom pet in room 26. Of course, I didn't know she was a substitute for Mrs. Brisbane at the time, and I didn't know she'd be leaving Longfellow's school for a while. I'm glad, glad, glad she finally came back. Humphrey must have had a family, Nicole said. I must have, I agreed. I remembered Carl and some of the other humans who had worked at Petorama and took care of us in the small animal department, but I didn't think of them as family. They never even talked to me. Mrs. Brisbane said that when humans or animals grow up, they leave their families to go out on their own. Most of you will move out of your parents' home when you grow up, she said. But smaller animals grow up faster than humans, so they can leave their mothers much sooner. Does anyone here have a dog that they got as a puppy? Some hands went up, including Joey's. Dogs are usually adopted by human families when they're puppies. How long does it take for a puppy to be ready to leave its mother, she asked. Joey said, Skipper was about eight weeks old. He wasn't grown up until he was about a year old, but he still acts like a puppy sometimes. So it only takes a year for a dog to grow up, our teacher continued. And it takes an even shorter amount of time for hamsters to be ready to leave their families. That's sad, Rosie said. Not really, Mrs. Brisbane said. It's natural, and if Ham Humphrey stayed with his mother or Skipper stayed with his dog family, we wouldn't be able to have them as pets. Mrs. Brisbane was right as usual. 
If I had stayed with my family or even stayed at Petorama, I wouldn't have a job of classroom pet. Oh, as the classroom pet. It's the best, best, best job in the world. Cassie glanced over at her table. I guess Og doesn't remember his family. After all, tadpoles are on their own from the very beginning, she said. Og looked sad, Rosie said. I think he looks as if he's smiling, Mrs. Brisbane said. Look at his mouth. I wasn't sure, but my friends chuckled, and soon the subject changed. When Mrs. Brisbane announced after math quiz, I scurried to the front of my cage and looked at Cassie, as usual. Oh, at, when Mrs. Brisbane announced another math quiz, I scurried to the front of my cage and looked at Cassie, as usual. She looked worried. When she glanced over at my cage, I immediately hopped on my wheel and began to spin, spin, spin. Cassie stared at me, and then she closed her eyes and took some deep, long breaths. Mrs. Brisbane passed out the test papers. Cassie took a few more deep breaths. I hopped off my wheel and watched her carefully. She didn't stare at her paper. She didn't hold her stomach. Cassie picked up her pencil and began to read the questions. She stopped every now and then to take a good long breath, and then she wrote down her answers. She looked over at my cage from time to time, and I tried to be encouraging. You can do it, Cassie, I said. You don't have to be perfect. Just do your best. Cassie finished the test before most of her other classmates. When she was finished, she sat back in her chair and smiled. I was smiling too, though I'm pretty sure no one else knew it. On her way out of the classroom for lunch, Mrs. Brisbane asked Cassie how the math quiz went. I think I did pretty well, Cassie said, and my stomach doesn't hurt. At the end of the day, Mrs. Brisbane made an announcement. I think some of you know Aldo Amato, our night custodian. Richie, oh, he's Richie Rinaldi's uncle. Yay, Richie, I squeaked. He was one of my friends from last year's class. Aldo's wife just gave birth to twins, Mrs. Brisbane continued with a smile. A boy and a girl. The boy is named Marco after Aldo's father. The girl is named Anna after Maria's mother. My friends began to clap. Marco and Anna, I didn't clap my paws, but I loudly squeaked, yes, yes, yes. As they filed out of room 26, I heard my classmates buzzing about the new babies. They were as excited as I was. As soon as the classroom was empty, I jiggled the lock that doesn't lock and scurried over to Ox Tank. Marco and Anna, I squeaked, a boy and a girl. Boing, he replied. Then I glanced over at Flip and Flap, swimming in their aquarium. They were also twins. I'd almost forgotten that Aldo was my old pal Richie's uncle. Was Og really an uncle, too? Suddenly, it seemed as if everybody in the world had a family, except me. I wasn't sure whether Aldo would be coming to, in to clean that night or if it would be Bob or some other stranger. But I wanted to make sure Gigi knew about the twins. So I took a chance and slid down the table leg and raced out of room 26. Gigi was still awake when I made my way up to her cage. I'm glad you came, Humphrey, she said softly. I wanted to tell you that Aldo's wife, Maria, had twins, a boy and a girl, I said. Twins? Gigi seemed confused. I explained that when humans have two babies at the same time, they're called twins. Oh, Gigi said, that's very good news. And that guy who came in to clean last night, he's just filling in for Aldo. I said, oh, Gigi re repeated. I was a little scared when he came, but he was nice. I'm sure Aldo will be back tonight, I said. Gigi moved a little closer to me. Humphrey, I'm worried about something. What's wrong? I asked. For the circus to, for the circus night, Ms. Mack told us about our booth. It's called the Clown Toss. Are people really going to throw clowns? That doesn't sound very nice, she said. It didn't sound nice at all. Throwing things at people or animals isn't nice at all, especially if the people are funny and it like to make people laugh like clowns. I think she might have been joking, I said, or maybe you misunderstood what she said. Gigi nodded. I hope so. And something else. The children want me to wear a clown hat, but guinea pigs don't like to wear clothes. Neither do hamsters. I think it's because we're already wearing our fur coats. Gigi giggled. You always make me feel better, Humphrey. I was glad, glad, glad I'd made Gigi feel better. But I didn't feel so great myself when the door opened later that night. I was looking forward to congratulating Aldo, but instead, Bob was back. Me again, he said as he pulled his cart through the door. Hi, 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 I said. 
Even though I was disappointed, I didn't want to hurt Bob's feelings. He dusted for a while, and he remembered to give Og and me our treats. I told my kids about you, he said. Now they want a hamster and a frog, too. Boy, Og sounded pleased. Bob was an unsqueakably nice human, but I still missed Aldo. I wondered whether he was ever coming back to room 26, and if not, why hadn't he at least told us goodbye? That night, I had a dream. I don't remember it very clearly, but there was a large, soft, furry creature who smelled wonderful, and I was snuggled up against this creature along with some other small bits of fur. It felt so peaceful next to her, and I heard her say something to me. Remember this, she squeaked. No matter where you go, you'll always be my special golden boy. I woke up with a start and squeaked. Mother. The only answer was Og's loud boing. Sorry, I told him. I think I had a dream about my mother and some brothers and sisters, too. Boing, Og replied. I didn't tell him the rest of my dream. After all, he pr probably didn't remember his mother and father at all. And he was green, not a golden boy like me, 